Nature always says no. Civilization always says yes. That is going to be a big problem for people who are going off grid, who spent their entire lives on grid. Because on grid, most of your wishes can be fulfilled. You want to drink a water, you go to the nearest public washroom and you turn on the faucet and there you have some potable water for the most part, unless you're in Flint, Michigan, apparently. 99 times out of 100, nature is going to say no. Doesn't matter if you're experienced or not, nature is going to say denied, try again. Civilization, on the other hand, increasingly more so, is more apt to say yes, or is more apt to console you, give you a pat on the back, or give you a participation badge, even if it says no. Unfortunately, these two things are not congruent. A person who has spent their entire life on grid, in going off grid, they're gonna get a big surprise unless they bring thousands of dollars of technology because it's that technology which is going to increase the likelihood that nature is going to be agreeable. Generally speaking, nature is not agreeable. The grid, on the other hand, if you want some food, you go to the nearest government agency and they will provide you with uh, some food stamps or you know some social assistance to go get some food. It's very hard to be denied your basic needs in modern civilization. A lot of people are not going to be able to deal with the stress of being told no. And nature is going to say no. Nature is, doesn't care what your feelings are. So if you live in this world where you're easily triggered by every little thing that disagrees with what you have to say, then you're going to be in for a big surprise if the shit hits the fan. Now there's a lot of people who've developed a certain comfort level with the wilderness. People like Rewild University who can go into the wilderness in the winter time with nothing but a loincloth and survive and seemingly in a way which is low stress, at least on camera. But I'm thinking the only way you can do that is if you had composure the majority of the time. Uh, I am not very composed when I'm in stressful situations in the wilderness in the sense that, you know, I swear a lot I'm at least for the first few days. After the first few days, you're going to develop a rhythm with it. At least I can because I have had a lot of experience in the wilderness. Not in the sense that I'm some, you know, Rambo of the woods type thing. But I, I've slept a lot of nights under the stars. But what happens is that you become acclimated to an urban lifestyle and it takes a few days of breaking in. So for your first few days in the woods, you're recalibrating to the baseline in nature, which is no. You know, you're not going to have easy access to potable water. You're not going to be able to catch a fish at this time of the day with the bait that you're using. Uh, you're not going to be able to light a fire with this uh, tinder, which is wet or I'm going to make it too humid for you to light a fire easily. Uh, you're not going to be able to have access to dry firewood. You're not going to be able to spot a deer even if you've you know, tried for days and days, even if you've seen tracks, but you just can't seem to <laughs> find the deer at the end of those tracks. You know, nature is just going to say no. And the problem with raising children nowadays, in particular, is that kids, especially growing up now, I mean, I grew up in the 80s, 90s, when you know, civilization was still saying no a little bit. I mean, definitely not as much as it was, you know, pre-World War II or something like that, when no was still kind of the norm. But now it's just saying yes to everything. And we, have, we live in this society where people want positive feedback, positive feedback, always all built around this humanistic notion of rewards and punishment has gone out of the window. But that negative reinforcement, that punishment is a crucial component of learning. Not so much the the punishment piece when it comes to survival because nature doesn't necessarily punish you but nature does negative reinforcement so negative reinforcement is just if you get something wrong something is taken away as opposed to positive reinforcement where something is given to you 
and punishment where you're actually you know punished you're actually beaten or whatever you're scolded in some way nature doesn't punish nature is indifferent but the learning mechanism which best approaches what nature does is negative reinforcement so so one of the main problem with children nowadays is that anything they want they get so these kids are going to grow up with a very skewed understanding of the agreeableness of the universe in the sense that they're going to think that even when nature is saying no it's really saying yes <laughs> when it isn't. It's saying no. It's saying that is not going to work. It's saying if you eat that plant, you're going to get sick. You know, there's only going to be consequences. If you drink that water, you're going to get sick. If you can't catch that fish, you're probably going to starve to death. Nature only has consequences. There is no consolation for trying. There is no redirect. There's no provision of options if you failed the first time. You just got to figure it out. Most people cannot deal with that kind of stress because they're so used to being given what they ask for immediately. People who enjoy the wilderness tend to get some level of enjoyment out of finding the grain of nature. And what I mean by that is, you know, finding the rhythm of nature and seeing nature's challenges, uh, not as challenges necessarily, but obstacles to be overcome because they see the reward in overcoming them. And I'm going to be doing a week-long canoe trip with one of these people, Survival Lily, in the near future. I'm gonna be doing a lot of videos and she's gonna be teaching me a thing or two about you know, primitive bushcraft. And she sent me this knife, the Apo One, the Apocalypse One. If she had one knife, for the end of the world, this would be the knife. She wanted to create a knife that she, you know, that if there was just one knife you could have, this would be it. And you guys know me, I got my bench made, I got my silky nada chopper, and about 50,000 saws. That's pretty much all I use out there. But I'm pretty excited to strap this knife to my Molly webbing on my backpack because it is a really nice, really nice knife it just feels nice it's a variation of another kind of knife i'm not exactly sure which one it was but she made some modifications to that design for it to be better suited to a do-all end of the world as we know it type knife so i'm going to check it out uh, i'll probably do a review on this in the near future if you want one of these uh, i'm going to post a link to survival lily's channel so Stay tuned for upcoming adventures with All-American Prepper and Survival Lily in the wilderness. <laughs> oh, I can only imagine the comments now. One of the greatest gifts you can give a child is to say no. And there's so many parents who don't want to say no to their kids. But I'm telling you, when they grow up, they're going to be said no to a lot. They're going to be said no to by the police. They're going to be said no to by their employers, by the tax man, by the doctor, by the mechanic, and they're just going to have to deal with it. The problem is they're not being told no enough and just no period. There's nothing wrong with no period. There's no better learning paradigm than the one that we've evolved for the last hundred thousands of years. And that's basically if you can't have something, you don't get it, and you need to try another way. Children need to be told no to better prepare themselves for a future which is going to be wrought with no's, especially if this wonderful civilization we have falters. You know, me and my old man didn't get on well when I was younger, and uh, but I realize now that a lot of what he said was right. You know, I realized that what he did prepared me for the world. The worst thing you can do for a child is spoil them. We have this weird understanding of child abuse nowadays. That if you say no to a child or if you scold them in some way, shape or form, that that's a bad thing. The only way to prepare them for the rigors of adulthood is to teach them deprivation to some extent. And that's a gift 
that you give to them. Because if you don't instill that within them early, they grow up with all kinds of weird problems. And we're seeing it nowadays, you know, all the mental health problems. Most of this is the result of people having their standards set so high, expecting to be told yes at every turn when they grow up and they realize, hey, not everybody is saying yes to me. Now I'm depressed. <laughs> well, guess what? That was reality. But society lied to you and told you that, you know, you're supposed to be told yes all the time, which is complete 100% bullshit. I look back on my childhood and I grew up dirt poor. If I wanted something, I couldn't have it. I could dream about it. I could imagine it and uh, look for, you know, all the things that I was going to save up my money for, you know, all of the video games and stuff like that. You know, when I was a kid, I'd look through the flyers. I never had any money, but I would get joy just in, you know, planning out how I was going to save money to buy a certain thing. And that in itself, that process in itself brought me great joy. Just the anticipation of having the thing as opposed to having the thing. And then I went over to friends houses and they had all this stuff, but they weren't happy. You know, they're swearing at their parents and it's just like, holy hell. I mean, I grew up in a Caribbean household and if you, if you curse at your parents, you know, it was on. <laughs> and look how these kids grow up. You know, they grow up entitled. They, they, they're so soft. They buckle at the slightest bit of pressure. There's a lot of people who are not prepared to survive off grid for a few days, much less indefinitely because they're so used to being told yes. And then shit hits the fan, you better get used to hearing the word no, because it's gonna happen a lot. Because remember, 99 times out of 100, nature says no. 99 times out of 100, civilization says yes. Those two things are incompatible. So if you wanna know why you're stressed, when you head out there into the wilderness and you can't get what you want, that's why. But there's also now a resurgence and people who don't want to be told yes, because they realize that, well, if I'm told yes all the time, there is no natural pleasure in things. If I'm always being told, uh, yes, you can have this, yes, you can have that, then where is the enjoyment? Where is the fulfillment in yes, if you're always being told yes? So people thrill seek and they voluntarily put themselves in situations with substandard living conditions in order to rough it so that they can take pleasure in the small things again. There's nothing like having a meal over a fire after a day spent bushwhacking through the woods. There's nothing like it. That meal will taste better than you going to the, the ritziest restaurant you can imagine because it's the contrast. You know, you just went through hell, so now you can experience heaven. If all you experience is heaven, heaven ceases to be. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Thanks for watching, Canadian Prepper O. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.